level, you know, independently for each track that I send to it. So I'm going to leave that set up. I'm going to add another effects channel and stereo configuration again. And I'm also going to grab here my shorter reverb. And I like to use um, Steinberg has a, a convolution reverb called Reverence. And um, and I normally just start with the default LA Studio in the, until I uh, feel the urge to switch that up. But this gives me a short sort of room, you know, like a, a stu an in-studio type of reverb um, that I can use when it's applicable. So now I have my, and I'm going to just label these here. I'm going to call that room, and we're going to call that plate. And I'm going to add one more effects channel. And we're going to call this, and we're, this is going to be our uh, delay. Um, let's see. For starters, I'm just going to use, I'm going to set up the Super Taps stereo, two taps. That's from Waves, and I spoke about this plugin. I really, I really dig this plugin. Uh, we'll give that a second to think about joining us. There it is. Okay, um, so this, this delay gives me um, actually two delays. So I've got a, a first one here and a second one here, and they can be set independently, both in their time, uh, their feedback, their EQ curve, everything. So I, I can I, basically, it's two delays in one. They have a, a six tap one as well, which is six delays in one. Uh, occasionally that comes into play, but for most parts, uh, this two tap is totally fine. So I can activate or deactivate each of those individual delays. I, I can set their, their delay time here, and, and I, I can set it to snap to the grid too. So I have it set to 16th notes, or I can free it up and be able to put any um, numeric value in terms of milliseconds there that I want. So, and then I can snap it to quarters, quarter note triplets, eighths, and so on. So I like to just keep it at 16th typically, because that's most often what's being used. So that's set up and ready to go, and I can close that out. So now if I expand all this, what I've got here is I've got my print track, which is going to accept everything uh, that co goes through the back end of my mixer. I've got my group tracks all set up, ready to import audio into, and I've got my effects channels all set up, ready for me to send audio to and to start tweaking uh, my effects channels. Okay, so the other thing that I like to do is if I take these, take my group tracks, for example, let's say I've got my all vocals track, which of course, if I solo it, like, like I mentioned before, contains these two groups as well. I want those to leave the computer and run through a pair uh, of inputs on my passive mixer. So what I do is I take that, that group there and I change from stereo out to stereo to say stem, stem one for example so now stem one on my passive mixer which is inputs one and two on my passive mixer if i solo them in hardware in the analog world i'm going to hear nothing but the vocals okay then i'll go down and i'll take my drums here and we'll send those out stem two i'll take all of my guitars and we'll send those out stem three i'll take all of my keys and we'll send those out stem four and I have my miscellaneous track, which I'm just going to send out stem four as well. And um, and then the one thing, when I first started playing around with this, uh, that kind of confused me for a minute, as uh, I realized after that you also have to make sure you send your effects somewhere out, <laughs> out of the computer as well. So I typically just use my fourth stem for all the little miscellaneous things, my effects, my keys, and uh, unless keys are a heavy part of the song, then I may dedicate a stem just to them. But a lot of times, keys are sort of a secondary thing in, uh, in the tunes that I find myself working on. So now I've got all of my effects coming out stem four, along with miscellaneous things, which there may not end up being anything in here, and then my keys as well. So if I solo stem four, I'm going to hear all of this stuff here. And then my guitars are out stem three, my drums are out stem two, and all of my vocals are out stem one. And now I'm, I'm set up. I can import audio here and just start dropping them in where they need to go in terms of these groups here and uh, start my mix. And everything is going to, s to come through my analog hardware, up through my pre-73s, as I mentioned in the other video, and back in on my return channel, which I can simply arm and hit return. Now, or sorry, excuse me, hit record. Now, there was one thing that sort of I wrestled with for a while when I was first experimenting with this, which is when you're mixing, you want to, of course, you need to be able to monitor what you're mixing. So um, that's kind of the uh, bare basics of, of mixing. You need to hear exactly what you're mixing. So one way to do it is if I, if I click the input monitor button 
on my return track, you can see there's my voice speaking into the mic right now. But if I hit my input button here, then I'm able to monitor anything that's going through my hardware and going to be printed back to my return. The, the, which is great, I, I hear everything perfectly. The problem is, is that while I'm mixing, let's say for example, I wanna solo the drums for a second. When I solo those drums, this becomes muted and now I can't hear anything anymore. The drums are soloed, but they're soloed for the computer only. I can't hear it anymore. And so this was extremely frustrating for the, f the first time I sat down to, to mess around with this. And so I, I uh, did a little research and did a little trial and error to try to figure out, well, how can I monitor my return and still have mute and solo functionality in my mix, which is very, very important. You need to be able to do that. Um, I discovered um, that if I open up my mixer, it's in the devices menu here under mixer, the keyboard shortcut is F3. So if I bring my mixer into play, um, I'm able to, uh, oh, actually, I, there's one thing I have to set up before I do this, but it's got to do with this L button right here. So that what that does is it activates a listen mode inside the control room, uh, which I have not activated, and that's why it's grayed out right now. So I'm going to quickly go back into my VST connections here. Uh, let's see, where'd it go? F4, of course, is the quicker way to get there, but it's a screencast, so I'm trying to make it visual for you. If I go into Studio, I've got to turn the control room on. Now the control room is on. So I can actually uh, take this now and say my monitors, my main monitors are going to be my ADATs 1 and 2, which is where I connected my main outputs to before, but I'm going to do it here inside the control room instead. Now if you look at outputs here, my stereo outs are not connected to anything because I want them to be connected to my main monitors here in, uh, in uh, the control room. Now that the control room is active, Nothing's really changed at this point in time. I've just switched from my main outs to my speakers to my monitor outs to my speakers. That's all I've really done here. So I can close this down. Now if I open up the, now you'll notice the uh, listen button is now not grayed out. It's available to me. So if I uh, open up the control room mixer here for a second, um, I'm gonna expand it a little so you can see a little bit more of it. So here's my control room mixer. Um, I have the listen enable button enabled. So that means that anything in my mixer with the listen enable button enabled, I will be able to li to hear no matter what the state of mutes and solos and input monitoring and so forth, no matter what state anything on the mixer is in, I will hear this track, okay? So I just do that on my return track. This, by the way, I'm just gonna separate this a little so it's more obvious. These are my inputs, my uh, main stereo input and my return input. And then this is my mixer for my actual mix here. And this is my main stereo out. So the, the, way this, the way this is set up now is actually really, really good because if I listen to this input channel, I'm monitoring my entire mix coming through my hardware back end and coming back into the computer. Um, that's exactly what I typically want in the beginning, for, you know, 80% of my mix. When I start to get towards the end, I can then disengage the listen enable button and engage the input monitor button and now what I'm listening to is the stereo output. So now I have the opportunity to set up a mastering chain if I want to that's independent from what's being printed through my hardware. This is a little bit kind of co confusing uh, until you have a chance to sort of see it in action but basically when I hit play on my mix all these tracks are going out my stems, my analog stems, into my passive summing mixer. They're being summed in analog and, you know, going through that whole hardware back end and then coming back into the computer and being recorded on this print channel, okay? And then once that print is, is recorded, then I can take that and run it through any kind of mastering effects that I want to, uh, to maybe some bus compression or anything like that that I want to tweak as my mastering stage. And I can do all of this at once within the same session. Uh, assuming, you know, my computer is up to the challenge. It depends on the mix and how many tracks and how many plugins are, are necessary. But this is very cool. So at any point in time, I can listen. I can listen right up here to my mastered version, or I can disengage that and listen here to my unmastered version directly off the mix through the hardware. So that gives me a lot of different control over what I'm listening to. It gives me the chance to experiment with different uh, mastering type chains um, and, uh, and to be able to move quickly back and forth between all of that. And so that in, uh, in essence is the basics of how I set up my, my system inside Cubase now that I have the, um, the analog backend.
So I hope you found some of that useful. And if it's confusing and you've got questions, just drop me a line up at techmuse.ca. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Tech Muse Podcast on, uh, on Twitter. Uh, the, and the same thing on Facebook as well. Great places to get a hold of me. So if there's any of this that's still a little you know, clear as mud, as they say, then just drop me a line and hopefully I can clarify. And maybe you can uh, get some use out of this information. Okay, I'll see you all over at techmuse.ca. And until next time, I'm out.